Number nine, identify and label the Bronsted Lowry acid, its conjugate base, and the Bronsted Lowry base and its conjugate acid in each of the following equations. And then we have this mess of a balanced equation. So in this case, we have to find the four components, the Bronsted Lowry acid, the conjugate base, the Bronsted Lowry base, and the conjugate acid in CuH2O3OH plus plus alh 2063 plus, which yields cuh 2042 plus plus alh 20508 2 plus. Okay, we got this. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hook up the pairs. So we're going to find the pairs. I like to work from left to right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I have this, um, I have this ion. It's got a copper in it. So I just need to find out the pair that goes with this one. It's got to have a copper in it as well. And between these two, this is the pair, right? The copper. There we go. Beautiful. So then if I picked correctly, the other one should make sense as well. And yeah, this one has the aluminum. And this one has the aluminum. So they go together. All right, cool. Now, what's next? Well, the easiest way is to get the word conjugate out of the way. Conjugates are always going to be on the product side. Conjugate is basically saying like the other part of the pair. So this has to be a conjugate something. I just don't know what it is yet, but I know it's a conjugate. And then this is also a conjugate something. Likewise, on the reactant side, these are your actual bronsted Lowry acids and bases. I don't know which one it is yet. So bronsted Lowry something and bronsted Lowry something. Now we're going to figure out which one is the acid and the base by actually analyzing the pairs. I'm just going to pick the green pair for now. And before we make that decision, let's just remember that acids always have one more hydrogen than its conjugate base, and then bases will have one less hydrogen. So acids always have one more. But this is a mess, right? How am I going to know which one is more hydrogens? Well, just add up the hydrogens. Total. They could be all over the place, but the total is what matters. So in this example, I have my H's here. I have two of them. There's a three outside here. So two times three is six. And I have one more hydrogen over here. So six plus one is a total of seven. So I have seven total hydrogens over here. Let's see how many hydrogens I have here. Now there was two and there's a four outside. So two times four is eight. And that's all the hydrogens here. So seven versus eight acids always have one more hydrogen. Which one is the acid guys? It's this one. It's got one more hydrogen, eight beats out seven. So since that's the case, this has to be the conjugate acid, and then this has to be the base. Now we just have to do the same thing with the other two. So let's see, I have two hydrogens, but it's a six outside, so that's 12 total hydrogens. And now let's see, I have two and a five, 2 times 5 is 10. There's another hydrogen up top here, so that's plus 1 more. So that's 11. 12 versus 11. Which one has more hydrogens? This one beats it out by 1. The acid will always have more hydrogens. So this has to be the... Oh, what happened there? This one has to be the acid, and then because of that, this one has to be the base. And if you've noticed... On one side of the equation, it's one base and one acid. And on the other side of the equation, one acid and one base. If you have two bases or two acids on one side of the equation, go back. Something went wrong. You got to have one and the other. All right? So hopefully this helped. This one was a little tricky one, but it wouldn't, you know, didn't get us. We got this. All right? So I hope you're having a great day out there. Let's keep studying hard. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.